Good Sunday morning, everybody. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee, I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. We've got a decently quiet, if not dusty, start to the morning. What am I talking about there? Well, we'll show you that on our webcams coming up here in just a little bit. We've got a lot of haze across the Mid-South area. It's nothing huge. It's nothing that's leading to problems on the interstate or anything like that, but that last cold front that came on through, and of course now the fact that it's planting season, we're getting a lot of topsoil disturbed, and so we've got some dusty conditions in and around the Mid-South area for right now and going to continue to see that again throughout the course of the rest of the morning and into probably the afternoon if those winds begin to pick back up again as we head into the rest of Sunday. If you've never joined us before on Weather Overtime, this is our exclusive video weather blog here. If you can't stick around for the entire forecast, it's in the blue bar down there scrolling along from side to side and can give you an idea as to what's happening. Also, you can catch our 7 to 10 day forecast in the lower left-hand corner of your screen and if that's not enough, all you have to is go to this website address, wreg.com slash weather for updates on everything going on in our forecast in the Mid-South area. Drop your location, and if you've got anything in the way of weather reports, let us know your city, state, in the Mid-South, or wherever you're checking in from this morning. Welcome to Weather Overtime and our Sunday morning update, and just Give us an idea what's going on. Give us some amateur meteorology across the Mid-South area. Temperature, wind speed, cloud cover, anything in the rain gauge, dust or rainfall, anything like that. I think we've pretty much turned the corner out of winter time. We're rapidly running out of winter, so I doubt we're going to be seeing too much of any more in the way of snowflakes, but we may see the potential for some thunderstorms and possibly some stronger weather into later on tonight. We'll detail that coming up here in just a little bit. Thanks to everybody for joining us for the this morning. If you're heading out the door pretty soon, here's the forecast in a nutshell. And again, if you're just tuning in, you can check the forecast in the blue bar at the bottom of your screen. Mostly cloudy through the morning. If you're down around, say, Oxford, Batesville, Clarksdale, Helena, West Helena, south of Tunica, you're going to be picking up more showers a little bit earlier into the rest of the day. But into the rest of the afternoon, this is where we start to see the potential for some rumbles of thunder. And then dinner time and through about News Channel 3 at 10 later on this evening, that's where we start to see the potential for some severe weather into the Mid-South, at least possibility anyway. We're expecting an update from the Storm Prediction Center where we get our forecast from when it comes to severe weather and how powerful the systems may be. Hopefully that should update here within about the next few minutes. It was due at about the top of the hour. And as of right now, about 8.06, <clears throat> excuse me, everything is working again to show that most of the threat for severe weather will be going south of the area. So we'll keep our eyes on that for right now and see what goes on across the Mid-South. If you're just joining us, thanks for checking in. Riyadh Gaucher from Cordova, welcome to the show. Whitehaven, Dr. Versa Harvard Brown, welcome to the show as well. Corinth, Mississippi, Vicki Gibbons, Gibbons, hope I'm saying that correctly. Thanks a lot for checking on through. Marion, Arkansas, cool from Mark Simmons. Thank you very much for checking in and hoping the storms stay away. Walterine Miller Morgan, yeah, me too, but unfortunately it doesn't look like we're going to be able to do uh, all of that, getting rid of most of the, the chances of thunderstorms tonight, but we'll talk about that in just a little while. This is what it's been looking like outside for this morning. Again, this is not fog. We don't have any reports of fog across the area, but with the winds from last night, a dry cold front swept through the area late yesterday afternoon and evening, and the winds did a very good job job of picking up pollen and topsoil, and that is a lot of what you're looking at right now from our 240 and Airways camera. Not affecting travel at Memphis International Airport, so that's good news. No delays, delays of 15 minutes or less according to the FAA. If you'd like to get this information, it's all available at this website, fly.faa.gov. And again, so far looking good at major and connecting airports across the rest of the country. So we're not seeing, again, a lot of major travel conditional problems here or throughout the rest of the area for Sunday morning. So if you're hitting the skyways pretty sh pretty soon, you should not see that much of a problem out there. Pope, Mississippi, 50 degrees, cloudy. Jeffrey Griffiths, thank you very much. Crenshaw, Mississippi, Joyce Johnson Berry, 52 degrees, light winds, thank you very much. Mostly cloudy, Poplar Grove, Thomas Bland, thank you very much. Uh, a lot of other people checking in from the area. John Michael, 45 degrees in Bartlett. Thank you very much uh, for that weather report there. Hazy again, I-40 from around the area close to Appling, all the way back to around Appling and Witten Road, back to around Germantown Parkway, off in the haze in the distance out there. And this has been pretty typical from what we've seen all morning long. 
including around the downtown area. It was a spectacular sunrise for about maybe five minutes, and then the clouds and the dust and everything else took over. So we do have some light of sunlight up here through the fractured cloud cover, but beyond that, as we look off to the southeast where sunrise was a little while ago. We don't have much of anything else to look at at this point in time. Likewise, on Storm Tracker 3S radar, we have nothing showing up for the metro area and for anything along and north of I-40. So northwest Tennessee, the Boot Hill, northeast Arkansas, not much of anything going on just yet. We do have some scattered showers in North Mississippi around and just south of Oxford across I-55 right along the Mississippi River Valley and some more replacement showers back into around portions of central Arkansas all the way back over to around Little Rock. Let me zoom in a little bit on some of this area right here. As again, this is going to be the location that picks up most of the showers throughout the rest of the area at this point in time. So we're going to be seeing the possibility of this lingering around for the rest of the day today. And this is going to be the best target zone for rainfall around and south of Oxford. So Water Valley, Coffeyville, Charleston, south of Batesville, and back over to the Mississippi. That's where we're getting the best chances of rainfall for now and throughout the course of the rest of the day. And some of that rainfall drifting on through areas close to around Phillips County in Arkansas, well to the south of Helena, West Helena, although you do have a few light sprinkles showing up there and all that again drifting its way back over to the east right around I-55. So if you're heading south or southwest from the viewing area, you may run in to more of those showers. This is also the area that we're going to be picking up the possibility of severe weather. Watching for watches, we do not have anything at this time. That one left over from last night and showing again nothing just yet in the way of precipitation for the Mid-South. So that's good news. But again, later on today, we can start to see areas south of us acting up by just a little bit. We'll talk more about that coming up here in a little bit. Milan, Tennessee, Tim Barber, welcome to the show. Dresden, Tennessee, Zoraida. See, Zoraida Zarelda Turner. It's kind of hard to read two point typeface with bifocal. Sorry about that. Christina Scruggs, welcome to the show. Priscilla Taylor from Cordova, Tennessee. JJ Denson, cloudy in Ridgely, Tennessee. Thank you very much. Annette Wilson, good morning from West Memphis, Arkansas. South Haven, Susan Armstrong Arthur. Everybody, welcome. Thanks a lot for joining us. Mid 40s, it's a lot colder than what we saw yesterday because of that cold front that made its way on through. And it's a little breezy, too. So we do have a bit of a wind chill every once in a while with numbers dropping into the mid to upper 30s. So we do still see that potential of some cooler weather for today. Temperatures yesterday, mid to high 70s, very pleasant across the area throughout the rest of the day today. It's going to be a little cooler. Temperatures by lunchtime, upper 40s to around the lower 50s, close to 60 degrees. And then through the rest of the day, cloud cover continues to increase, and we see that chance of showers increase right on in through about dinner time tonight. Could be some embedded thunderstorms, especially down around this area from southeast Arkansas through northwest Mississippi. Back to the north of that, Dyersburg, Jackson, into around, say, Corinth. You probably won't see too much of anything immediately, but I would be prepared for later on tonight just in case, especially as we go through about News Channel 3 at 10. Again, we got the tournament on tonight, so we may be a little delayed with the News at 10 being the late edition at some point. And that's where we see these concentrated areas of showers and embedded thunderstorms making their way into the Mid-South through about midnight and into very early tomorrow morning. We could see starting about a dinner time tonight, some more watches being issued by the Storm Prediction Center. And then we catch a little bit of a break as we go into Monday. Unfortunately, we do see rainfall potential for the commute time. And then by tomorrow, late morning into the afternoon, another round of thunderstorms could be making its way on through. And that could be our next potential severe weather threat as that possibility of the threat down to our south tonight makes its way up into middle Tennessee and then clears out Monday evening to be replaced by yet another round of showers and thunderstorms as we go into Tuesday. So we're going to be getting pretty well stocked on the potential for the showers and thunderstorms out there for a while to come. Here's what we're looking at again for tonight. Again, this is the latest update from the Storm Prediction Center, and it's basically unchanged since last night's forecast, which is showing again from the Red River down to the Florida Panhandle, this yellow area. That is a slight risk category, and this right in here is where we're seeing the highest threat of severe weather. This is not a major severe weather outbreak. This is not anything in the way of massive tornadoes, 
huge hailstones, things like that. There is the possibility, though, of damaging winds, some hail, and maybe some isolated tornadoes mixed in with that as a secondary threat. So granted, this is not exactly your super-duper mid-plain states outbreak, but once again, when these things start being issued, now's the time to start paying attention to this and to get ready for what may happen later on tonight. So again, please keep that in mind at this time. Nancy Barnett, Cleveland, coffee is hot. Glad to hear that. I've been uh, sharing the coffee around here with the crew for this morning. It was kind of a long morning so far on daybreak, but Senatobia, Mississippi, thanks for joining us from there. Now, into tomorrow... The threat, again, comes right to the southern edge of the News Channel 3 viewing area. We see, again, for most of the Mid-South, basically what we're looking for for right now is the main threat to be passing south of us, but there could be the possibility of some thunderstorms that turn severe northern Mississippi and east-central southeastern Arkansas in a lesser marginal threat, and that goes right up to the metro area. The rest of the Mid-South area, the pale green colors here, that's just generic thunderstorms. So the severe threat, lesser here, higher down here, this is going to be the best potential of anything involving, again, severe weather as we get into later on tonight. Now, from Sunday night into Monday, the threat goes from here over to here. So Middle Tennessee, Nashville, down to around Birmingham, there is an enhanced risk of severe weather, a higher threat. This bullseye area here will show the possibility of strong thunderstorms. This will be mainly Monday afternoon, and the good news is at this time, this is mainly avoiding the Mid-South area, but notice that again, Northeast Mississippi, parts of Southwest Tennessee in that slight risk category, and that marginal threat does include the metro area. So that chance just south of us makes its way, swings upward back to the northeast, and that's where we may see the potential again for some stronger weather into and around tomorrow afternoon. So this is going to be kind of a one-two punch type of situation, and we'll keep an eye into and around uh, the area for the rest of the day. New Orleans, Olander Alexander, thanks a lot for joining us from the Crescent City. Haven't been down that direction since 2012. If you could send some beignets and coffee up this direction, that'd be uh, very much appreciated. Cloudy Judas Driver Hutchins, thank you very much uh, from wherever you happen to be. And Bogota, Tennessee, hope I'm saying that town right. Jimmy Parsons, no water needed at this point in time. Judas Driver from Oxford, Mississippi, thank you very much uh, for checking in this morning. Again, for the rest of the forecast, Pleasant, again, for today on the temperatures. This is about as typical mid-March as you can possibly get. So yesterday was nice, way above normal, but this will be just a little bit less warm than yesterday. Maybe a little breezy at times. And again, the developing chances of showers and thunderstorms into this afternoon, this evening, and the heaviest activity coming up as we go into around overnight. Showers and thunderstorms off and on. It's not going to be a total washout for Monday, but again, there will be that possibility as we get through the rest of the day and hopefully leaving the Mid-South by about dinner time tomorrow to be replaced by mostly cloudy skies and much cooler. The first day of spring is not going to feel like it. The last day of winter is going to feel more like spring than the first day of spring will. Hope you followed all that because that was a little confusing to me. I lost track of that sentence for a second. Showers and thunderstorms on Tuesday. And again, that is going to be leaving the area to give us a few more days to dry out. Wednesday, Thursday, and early Friday. What could be another round of thunderstorms coming our way as we go toward Friday evening into around Saturday. Again, on next Sunday, some showers possible. And then another round of thunderstorms next Monday and a bit of a cool down coming on through. Also, again, through about, say, Wednesday morning, Thursday morning, could be some chilly mornings at the bus stop for the kids as some colder air rolls into the Mid-South. And the weather, uh, National Weather Service in Memphis is showing possibility of maybe some frost back in the area. So if you have any plants outdoors on these mornings, you may want to think about protecting those into the area. Theris Warren, will it rain? Yes. Uh, as we go throughout the rest of the day, more showers developing, but nothing immediate taking place at this point in time. If you have not volunteered for Skywarn before, I urge you to think about taking one of these courses. Maybe you've moved to the Mid-South area and you've never experienced anything in the way of severe weather or severe weather warnings before. Uh, back in Topeka, Kansas, my dad, as an architect, built a uh, house on our property as a rental property, and one of the people, uh, one of the couples who lived there, was from San Bernardino, California. The husband got transferred in from the Santa Fe rail yards to work at the Topeka rail yards. 
the wife, Mrs. Bustamante, wanted to move back to California because she hated tornado warnings. She would rather have dealt with earthquakes and wildfires any day of the week because she didn't like the idea of knowing that much about when the tornadoes were coming. So if you would like to know more about what to do, what to look for in storms beforehand, how to prepare for severe weather, more importantly, what to look for when these things start happening because the information that you provide by using these and this up here can help save lives around the rest of the Mid-South. This organization is called Skywarn, and if you'd like to volunteer for this, meetings are coming up over the next several days, including the one for Memphis. That'll be held Tuesday, March 27 at 7 p.m. I have attended a Skywarn meeting every year since 1980. How old does that make me? You don't get to ask that, sorry, but not going to be revealing that information for right now. Now, again, if you'd like to know more about this, just head to our weather section. Again, that's going to be listed there at wreg.com slash weather. These meetings last for an hour, hour and a half, depending on how many questions are asked. They are totally free. They are paid for by your tax dollars and my tax dollars. So again, great way to spend our tax money training the public with what to look for and how to get ready for these situations. Next one coming up is tomorrow, March 19th at Trenton, Tennessee. Tuesday next, uh, Calhoun City, Mississippi. Monday after that in Dyersburg, Tennessee. And Tuesday, March 27th again in Memphis. That one at Lord of Life Lutheran Church on Poplar Pike. And again, if you'd like to know more about this, all you have to do is go to our website or dial up the National Weather Service and to get more details about this. It's a great opportunity to learn more. If you haven't attended a meeting in years, now's the time to keep up on this. The more you keep up to date as to what's going on with forecast information, proper procedures, how to, again, inform your business, your organization, your place of worship as to what needs to be done for safety factors, your kids. If you have kids or grandkids who are scared of the weather, I have recommended these courses to counselors and psychologists that when kids are frightened of the weather, this can give them some control over what feels to them to be an uncontrollable situation. So this is a very highly recommended course. I would say probably about eight or nine years old and up would be the ideal age. And again, this will help to get the kids a little bit less anxious about what may be happening. So again, this could be something good for everybody when it comes to understanding what severe weather is all about. So again, check out our website for more information on that, and we'll keep you updated there. Again, best time for severe weather is going to be late this evening into and around the area of overnight into Monday morning. The NCAA tournament is on News Channel 3 throughout pretty much the rest of the day, so that may push our programming and our newscast back a little bit tonight. Night. But if that happens, we'll let you know on social media and we'll crawl stuff at the bottom of the screen as much as possible. But once again, if we run into problems with severe weather, we will break in to programming to let you know what's going on. We make no apologies about that because if it's life-threatening, we have a duty to let everybody out there know what's going on. And we will try to repeat programming as possible, but life threatening storms come first over sports or anything else that goes on out there. So keep it tuned to the weather experts, and we'll keep you advised as to what's happening with the Mid-South weather as we go into tonight. Thanks to everybody for joining us on our exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime for early Sunday morning. We'll have more coming up later on tonight on News Channel 3 throughout the rest of the evening and right on into Monday morning. So stick around with News Channel 3 on air and online for the latest severe weather forecast and bulletins and warnings should they become necessary.